What's up y'all, now look. Software engineering is a continuously exploding field and many people are looking to make the leap into the industry. So if that's you, you definitely landed on the right video. Now, quick caveat before we get going. I believe that the best way to learn software engineering is actually on the job. So let's hyper-focus on just getting our first role and then your learning will be exponential. Now there are three focus areas that you're going to want to prioritize in order to land the job as fast as possible. And those are actually learning to code, technical interview prep, and a hot tech specialty. So I'm going to be going into depth on each of these areas. And in the end, I'll give you an overview of how you should stack your learning in order to tackle each one. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And with that being said, let's jump in. So focus area number one, actually learning to code. Now, a lot of people will tell you that you should do project based learning because it allows you to focus on what you're actually interested in. And when you get stuck, you learn how to get yourself out of those jams. Now, I agree with this to a point, but I definitely believe that you jump straight into projects from the beginning, it's more likely that's going to frustrate you and lead to a higher chance that you might quit before reaching your goal. So instead of this, what I actually recommend is to get a baseline knowledge first. And to that end, we're going to go through a course or a textbook depending on your learning style. I have used both of these. My personal preference is a course, but I did learn C++ through a textbook when I was first learning to code, and that was great as well. And by the way, if you're gonna go the course route, you should definitely check out Udemy. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. It's just an amazing place to get all of your courses. And if you're new to that platform, then definitely be aware that they're running sales all the time. So if you go to pick up a course and you see that they're any more than say $15, just wait five to seven days and there will definitely be a sale where you can pick up the course on the cheap. So in order to know what course or textbook to do, you're first gonna wanna pick your language of choice. My recommendation for this is to go onto YouTube and look at front end and back end. Spend about 15 to 20 minutes watching videos on each one and see which one piques your interest more. Once you've done that, just look at the common languages used to perform each one and watch a few minutes of videos on those languages, and then you'll have a pool to pick from. Once you learn one programming language, it's a lot easier to pick up the next one. So just keep chugging along and learn the fundamentals. So as you're going through this course or textbook, make sure you're stopping to do all the exercises along the way so you can really build the fundamentals, but avoid trying to memorize everything. The more you code, the better you'll get, and you'll quickly realize that you can just look up so many things that make memorizing them obsolete. So as you're going through the course, just seek to understand the material as you do it, and you will get better and better at programming as you go along. Once you finish your course or textbook, then you're gonna wanna jump into two guided projects. Now I say guided because you'll still probably see yourself as a beginner and it might still be hard to just jump into a full-fledged project. So instead, go onto YouTube and look up tutorials for projects you might wanna do. Follow along with those tutorials and you'll get a nice structure for your project and then make it your own. And so now you're gonna to wanna to add your own features on top of the project and you can start to get a feel for how to do things yourself. For example, when I was early on in learning to code, I went through a tutorial on building space invaders in Python. And this was a great way to get a good structure going, but I thought it would be cool to add hazards and upgrades. So I about doubled the code, truly making the game my own. And this was a really fun project and it didn't feel overwhelming because I allowed the guide to give me a nice framework from which to work from. So I would suggest that you do the very same thing and go through two guided projects after you're finishing your course or textbook. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is two projects on your own. Now it's important to realize here that we're just trying to land a job in software engineering. So these projects don't need to be perfect. You really just wanna get a baseline functionality and as soon as you get that, you can go ahead and throw them on your resume. And by the way, you can also throw your guided projects on your resume because you added your own features and made the project your own. So once you get baseline functionality in the first one, go ahead and move on to the second one and try to achieve the same goal. And to be honest, after you finish the two guided projects and your first personal project, you're gonna be ready to go ahead and work in the industry. We're still gonna to try to do the second personal project as well to bolster your skills and your resume. 
Now that doesn't mean waiting to apply until we're done with all these projects, but we'll get into exactly when you should apply in the overview at the end. And honestly, that is all for just the learning to code portion. It's a very important part of the process, but with these actionable steps, it's probably not as scary as it may have seemed before. So focus area number two, technical interview prep. And I can hear everyone cringing as I'm about to say that this is probably even more important than the first focus area of learning to code. Now, obviously you have to learn to code a bit in order to technical interview prep as well, but this is a whole different animal in and of itself. And when we're just trying to land a role in software engineering, it is becoming increasingly important in your success rate of doing that. So we're gonna be tackling this area with three concrete steps with a resource link to each one. So the first one is learning how to actually approach these problems. And to do that, my recommendation is to get Algo Expert. This was integral to my preparation for technical interviews as it taught me how to approach these problems in the first place. So pick up Algo Expert and first tackle the data structures crash course. I would say only spend about a week here. You can go through it pretty quickly. You just want a baseline knowledge of data structures so that you can start to frame your mind around how to use them in the algorithms. From here, you're going to want to tackle one question per day, making sure to give yourself the proper amount of time to rest each week so you don't burn out. And when you're doing the questions, try to do them on your own first, use the hints as you need them. And when you're really stuck, head over to the video. This is honestly the best part of the platform and watch through the conceptual overview, go back to your question, try to do it again after you know kind of how to solve it. And then you can also watch the code walkthrough. This is honestly an amazing platform and they probably have your language of choice. I would definitely recommend learning to technical interview prep with Python as it's just the easiest language to use during your interviews and it's very widely accepted. After you do about 70 to 100 questions on Algo Expert, from here you're going to want to do massive repetition. And to do this, I recommend the platform LeetCode. Up to you whether you want to spring for the premium membership or not. If you decide to go that route, then just check out the explore pages for popular companies such as Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and do all the questions that those tracks recommend and you'll probably be feeling pretty good for your interview. If you wanna go the free route, that's totally cool as well. I would recommend checking out a curated list such as the Blind 75 so that you don't waste time going through questions that are unlikely to come up in an interview. Now that you've completed that, you're going to want to just get comfortable with the interview itself. It's a lot different going from the practice realm to the interview setting. And so for this, I cannot recommend it enough. Please get on Pramp. Pramp is a mock interview site where they pair you up with somebody else also studying for their interviews. You spend 30 minutes interviewing them, then they spend 30 minutes interviewing you. And you will just start to feel so much better about the actual interview day. I did over 20 of these in the few weeks leading up to my biggest interviews to get comfortable with the idea of interviewing. Plus, it allows you to meet some really cool people, and I have a few friends I met on Pramp that I'm still in touch with even over a year later. Now, in order to get the best out of this, it's important that you ask the person interviewing you for some feedback live in the session. There is a questionnaire that you're given the ability to fill out after the interview is over, telling the interviewee how they did on the question that you asked them and give them some feedback. But I really recommend asking them live because not everybody fills these out entirely and it will give them an opportunity to tell you in real time and give you more information on how you can improve. So those were the three steps to preparing for the technical interview. It's really important that you start that as early as possible. And we'll get into exactly where to position it once we hit our overview of the timeline. So our final focus area to prioritize is learning a hot tech specialty. A lot of people when they're first starting out, and I know that I did this exact same thing, will try to be a jack of all trades on their resume. But what I've actually found, if you can find a hot tech area and dive deep and become a special of this, just litter your resume with this area. If you pick a hot area of tech, such as cloud computing, machine learning, artificial intelligence, there will be so many companies looking for these roles 
And oftentimes these companies prefer somebody that goes deep into these roles instead of having a lot of general service level things on their resume. So to use me as an example, I chose to go down the route of cloud computing because I just found it really interesting. So I had AWS on my resume, I had a project utilizing Google Cloud Platform, and I also had a project utilizing Azure. And I really don't think it's a coincidence that I ended up at Microsoft specifically under the Azure org. So how I recommend you go about doing this is watching 30 to 60 minutes of a few areas that you think you might be interested in and trying to get a feel for which one you want to dive deeper in. Now, don't worry, you're not going to be pigeonholed in this area forever. It's really easy once you get into the industry to actually pivot and make your role consume different things. Being specific will still help you so much and landing in in the first place. So once you decide an area of interest, you should take the first step to try to learn about that area more deeply but try to do something that you can actually put on your resume. So for example, when I was learning cloud computing, I chose to get the AWS Solutions Architect certification because I knew that it would teach me the fundamentals of cloud computing, but that companies also respected it enough that I could put it on my resume. Once you get the basics down, you're definitely ready to start using it in your projects immediately. So that's how I suggest that you continue to develop in this area. You're gonna merge this core priority with the first one of learning to code, and as soon as you're ready, start to implement it in the projects. Ideally, that will be from the second guided project or the first personal project. But you wanna to try to do this as soon as you can so that you can start filling up your resume with this hot area. Okay, so we've gone into depth on tackling the three focus areas, and now I wanna give you an overview of exactly how I would approach stacking these together, learning them in conjunction, and making them work for me. But before I do that, I just wanna say, if you've gotten any value out of this video so far, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. It really goes a long way to help me out to bring more content like this. Now this overview is just going to be brief with concrete steps, but if you want a more in-depth look at this with dope graphs and stuff in the future, definitely let me know in the comment section and I'll whip that up for you all. The two areas that you're going to wanna to be focusing on from day one are actually learning to code and technical interview prep. So at the very beginning, you're gonna start with your course or your textbook and alongside of that, knock your data structures crash course out and then start doing one question per day for your technical interview prep. So once you finish your course or your textbook, moving on on the learning to code thread, you're going to start your first guided project. This is also the time where you're gonna start learning your hot tech special team and getting a baseline so you can use it in upcoming projects. Hopefully by the second guided project or your first personal project, you'll know enough to start integrating this hot tech area into those projects and getting them down on your resume. And remember this whole time, we're still doing Algo Expert at least one question per day, five days a week. So when you finish the two guided projects, jump into your first personal project and just work to get a baseline functionality. As soon as you do that, this is when you apply. Don't wait until your fourth project is done. Just go right now. There's definitely a chance that you could make it into the interview stage right from this point. But even so, you're going to move on to your second personal project. And as soon as anything is working on that, update your resume with this fourth project and you're gonna be well on your way. Right when you apply is also the time that I would switch from Algo Expert to LeetCode and start getting that pattern recognition and that repetition of concepts. Okay, so up to this point, you've finished your course, you've done two guided projects, and you've gotten baseline functionality in two of your own personal projects. You've also integrated your hot tech specialty. So now is the time to start bolstering your skills section by just learning other technologies and languages at a surface level. So start looking into front-end frameworks, back-end frameworks, databases. Just learn a small amount about some of these areas and do some minor exercises so you can discuss what you've used it for in the past when your interviewer asks. Now importantly, once you actually land an interview, this is the time you're gonna to wanna to jump on Pramp and start to get a feel for the interview setting. Do as many of these as you can. You can completely abandon all projects and other forms of technical interview prep and just focus on this. Now you have the interview and it's time to go crush it. So that's really all you need to know in order to learn to code and get into the industry as fast as possible. Try not to let it be overwhelming. If you just take it one step at a time, you will be successful. And so that's it for me. But remember, we'll all make it together. Just gotta keep praying.